Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's April the 1st, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, is a CIA torture report being blocked by the president? Then, the EU agrees to launch operations in the Central African Republic. And Bilderberg 2014 is announced for Copenhagen. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. You've had about, you had about 10 beers? Uh, about yeah, 16 beers, but <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. Well, it was yesterday that for the very first time, Bilderberg announced where they were going to be holding their conference. It's always been a secret. As a matter of fact, for decades, it was denied that they even existed. But yesterday, they put it on their website. Today, after a little bit of detective work, we learn exactly where it's going to be held in Denmark. Bilderberg is found. The 2014 Confab is going to take place at the Marriott Hotel in Copenhagen. The meeting of the secretive global power brokers will almost certainly take place at the five-star Marriott Hotel in Copenhagen, Denmark, from May 29th to June 1st, writes Paul Joseph Watson. He says, after Denmark was confirmed yesterday as the site of the organization's 62nd conference, inquiries to the Marriott show that no rooms are available for those dates, indicating that Bilderberg has booked out the entire hotel for its annual confab. Now, remember that one of the very first Bilderberg meetings was in 1955, and it was there that they planned both the EU and the Euro. So it's kind of fitting that, as last year we learned, the topics that were being discussed there, at least what they told us they were talking about, was big data and Africa. Now we see from RT that the EU is agreeing to launch military operations in the Central African Republic. The Council of the European Union have announced the immediate launch of a military operation in the Central African Republic to, as they put it, help achieve a safe and secure environment. That's right, I'm from the EU, I'm here to help you. Now they say the costs are estimated by the EU at 25.9 million euros for the preparatory phase, just the preparatory phase a mandate of up to six months starting from the point of reaching full operational capability. The move has also been authorized by the UN Security Council. Hey, I thought the European countries were struggling with austerity measures. I thought they were broke. I guess you can never be so broke that you can't go in farther to the banks and to the military industrial complexes. But some people have had enough. We see a burgeoning secession movement coming up throughout Europe. And here's the latest one in Sicily. RT reports that Sicilians are marching for independence from Rome. Independence activists march through the center of the Sicilian capital city of Palermo on Sunday, demanding a referendum of the island's population on the question of leaving the Italian Republic. Activists have been inspired by the example of the recent informal referendum of Venetians and say that Sicily is being robbed by the Italian state and the European Union. They got that exactly right. It was in Italy that the democratically elected leadership was replaced by Goldman Sachs banker Mario Monti, who they call a technocrat. They are being robbed by the EU, by the bankers, and now they're going to be funding a war in Africa. Who's going to benefit from that? Well, that will be the corporations, as usual. Now, it's not just in Europe. It's not just in Africa. We see that many places, tyrants, of course, are always using war to scare the population and to control it. And we see that Actually, a real hot war looks like it's on the verge in Korea. Certainly looked like it to a lot of islanders. Korea trades fire, both Koreas. Island residents are in shelters. North and South Korea fired hundreds of artillery shells into each other's waters on Monday for a flare-up of animosity that forced residents of five frontline South Korean islands to evacuate to shelters for several hours, say officials from South Korea. The exchange of fire into the Yellow Sea followed Pyongyang's sudden announcement that it would conduct live fire drills in seven areas north of Korea's disputed maritime boundary. Now, no shells from either side were fired at any land or military installations, but Kim called the North's artillery firing a provocation aimed at testing Seoul's security posture. Well, back in the U.S., the Washington Times reports that the Benghazi account that we were given was very misleading, according to a CIA officer. Before the Obama administration gave an inaccurate narrative on national television that the Benghazi attacks grew out of an anti-American protest, actually a protest of a third-rate movie, the CIA station chief in Libya pointedly told his superiors in Washington that no such demonstrations occurred. 
Documents and interviews with current and former intelligence officials show that the attack was not an escalation of protests. The station chief wrote to then Deputy CIA Director Michael Morell in an email dated September the 15th, 2012, a full day before the White House sent Susan Rice to several Sunday talk shows to put out talking points claiming that the Benghazi attack was a protest over that anti-Islam video. It was absolutely an absurd narrative, but that's not the only place where they've been misleading us. They've also been misleading us about the interrogations that the CIA has conducted over many, many years. Now, there was a 6,000-page report that was produced, and it's been sitting, waiting to be discussed, waiting to be revealed for over a year. And you may remember that as we were waiting for that, the Senate Intelligence Committee was outraged just a couple of weeks ago to find that their staffers, as well as senators on that committee, were being watched by the government, by the CIA. Imagine that. Imagine that. So the people like Dianne Feinstein, who have been excusing the NSA's behavior, got very upset when the CIA did the same thing to them. So they have now released that 6,000-page report. Now, we told you about this back in December that it had been sitting around for about a year. In this article, we said that it cost $40 million to produce this report, and of course, it had been sitting around for a year. This is what they're saying now. The CIA described its program repeatedly to the Department of Justice and Congress as getting unique, otherwise unobtainable intelligence that helped to disrupt terrorist plots and save thousands of lives. But actually, what it revealed, they say, was excruciating interrogation methods that yielded little, if any, significant intelligence. Now, they do say this, and this is pretty amazing. They say it was a damning disclosure of sprawling network of secret detention sites known as black sites that was dismantled by Obama in 2009. Remember, this is coming from the Washington Post. I don't think he stopped rendition. Do you remember the NDAA? Why would he stop rendition and then put in the NDAA where you can be indefinitely detained without trial by the U.S. military and shipped anywhere they wish? Now, we also see in another article from Mother Jones, there's five things you need to know about Obama's new NSA proposal. That's right. They're not just lying to us about the past. They're lying to us about what they're going to do in the future. They're not going to end the NSA bulk data collection program. It only addresses the bulk collection of phone records. That's right. It leaves your emails your metadata, any of that stuff is still fair game. And they're not stopping the collection of it. They're going to make the phone companies collect it. And of course, now the phone companies want to be paid for that. Of course, they'll spy on you if the government will make it worth their while financially. They also point out that Obama could end this program if he wanted to, just like he extends Obamacare at will. He has the power to stop it. He's not doing it. And of course, there's this bill that was put out last week by Mike Rogers and Dutch Ruppersberger, a Democrat and a Republican, and they want to go even a little bit further than Obama's proposal. They want to take out any judicial review of this data collection that's going to now be privatized. That's right, we have a fascist state. Let's make it really fascist. Let's let the corporations do it for the government and just work collectively with them. While Dianne Feinstein in the Senate is a little bit angry about the fact that they got spied on and they're pushing back a little bit, the House Intelligence Committee and Mike Rogers just can't do enough for the police state. Well, coming up after the break, we have another way that they control us, and that's through political correctness. And Leanne McAdoo has a report on that. And then I have an interview with Patrick Hawley of The Daily Caller. We're going to talk about all the tough talk from Congress about the IRS scandal and why they won't do anything about it. Stay tuned. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. I'm out here on UT campus today to find out if banning the word bossy is an effective way to make sure girls can be all they can be, or is that simply just a mere way of policing thought and, in fact, girls might be a little stronger than that than to allow one word to derail their hopes of leadership. Have you heard of the hashtag ban bossy? I have not. Oh. Man, like millions of people have seen this video and no one I've talked to has heard about it. Nope. Basically, there's this big campaign going to ban the word bossy mm -hmm. because they are saying like Beyonce and uh, Sheryl Sandberg and other really successful women are saying that it stops girls from becoming leaders. Do you agree that banning the word bossy will help girls become leaders? I think it's going to be up to the women. I don't think you can just ban a word and overnight people will be... You know, like all the stigmas against women will be gone. So, I mean, if people want to do that, then good for them, I guess. So, I, what I think I hear you saying is that oppression doesn't necessarily come from language? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you can ban the word, but people are still going to say it. I mean, it, it's got to come from a different source than just banning language. Do you think that banning words is an effective way to change the oppressive structures that exist? I think it could maybe start a conversation about it. I don't know if it's the best way to fix the problem, but it's definitely very true that women are often told that they're overly aggressive when they're just being assertive. Um, but I don't think necessarily a banning a word is the answer to it, but maybe a start to a conversation about it. I wouldn't use it and think that they're all automatically talking about a specific gender. I would assume, I know a lot of guys that are very bossy. So one of my roommates is very bossy, so. And does he get offended when you call him bossy? Does he does he tell you that you're hampering his ability to become a leader? Um, no. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't like it, but that's why we say it. It's to make him probably just get under his skin a little bit. I don't think bossy is like the word they should ban. I think there's another like B word that should be banned, not bossy. So that's what that was what I was saying because Beyonce is what like the big face of this program, and her husband has used that other B word at least a thousand times in his that. Beyonce called herself that B word so I think I don't really see too many people saying the word bossy but the other one I see that one a lot so if any word should be banned it should be that one there's this huge thing now in our society to like keep yeah. everyone from ever getting hurt or from ever yeah. experiencing any sort of pain and obviously yes it's much more extreme now with like social networking and stuff but I mean maybe it builds character I don't yeah, know yeah that's I what I was gonna say pain builds character like, you can't ha be a good person and help people and give advice if you don't know what they're going through and you've had this a good life. Everyone called me bossy as a child, and I didn't like it. <laughs> I think it kind of, like, pushes you to actually act that way because that's what people see you as. Mm, interesting. So you are more bossy now. Have you embrace this bossiness? Does it make you feel like a boss, or do you feel like the other B word? 
uh, like the other B word. <laughs> I don't think that word really has any specific connotation that's negative. I think it could actually be used positively um, as far as just a powerful woman. If anything, you should allow everyone to say whatever, like whatever is on their mind, you know, if they really want to.